Hello everyone, before starting the video, don't forget to subscribe and show support for the growing channel. Today's topic is dangerous and mysterious. Some believe in it, some consider it to be superstitious and far from being real. One of the most dangerous and evil practices throughout history till this day. It is based on following demonic and satanic guidances using fumes, organs, candles and even blood. A world filled with secrets which were written in rare forbidden books. Black magic, one of the most controversial topics throughout history. Whether you believe in it or not, it is still practiced till this day in almost every country in the world. The practice of black magic existed thousands of years ago. Make sure to stay till the end of the video where I'm going to tell you about two real lifetime stories about black magic practices you never heard of before. Let's start with its history. Humankind have known magic practices since the beginning of times. Most of human civilization considered people who practice magic, witches, warlocks, and fortune tellers as important people in the society and assigned them to high positions in many countries. It even gave them the social, political, and economic decision making to them since they were considered to have superpowers no one else has and the ability to change the present. Keep in mind, magic and fortune telling is not the same thing. Fortune telling is when a person can predict the future, while magic is when a person has the ability to change the present. The very first civilization known to practice black magic is the Pharaoh civilization in Egypt. The Pharaoh civilization did not only attract researchers with its kings, treasures, and mysterious architectures, but also with its magic. Researchers have considered the pharaoh magic as one of the most dangerous kinds of magic to ever exist. It was even considered to be a curse and used to chase away the evil spirits and protect the pharaoh, its treasures and mummy after his death so that he or she could be able to continue his journey peacefully after death. Zahi Hawass, one of Egypt's well-known archaeologists and Egyptologists, said in one of his books that usually we see writings on pharaoh graves put there for protection and also to scare away anyone who would annoy or disturb the pharaoh in his grave. Some texts even say that the one who disturbed the peace of the pharaoh in his grave will be cursed by snake poison. One of the scariest and well-known phrases is on the grave of the pharaoh Tut An Amun. It says, death will hit with its poisonous wings anyone who disturbs the tranquility of the king. And that really did happen. Howard Carter, the discoverer of the pharaoh's grave, his team and his family had a tragic death sometime after his discovery of the grave. It is as if the curse of the grave was put upon them. Black magic was not used for the sole purpose of protecting graves. Pharaoh also used it to protect their powers, wealth, and kingdoms. Zahi Hawass also said that pharaohs and their priests, as they were called, practiced magic on the living as well in order to revenge. One of the stories told by Zahi Hawass in his book was based on a pharaoh's ancient paper telling the story of a priest discovering his wife's infidelity. And in order to get his revenge, he followed the cheating man in the river to have a wash. The priest put a tiny wax crocodile in the water and by using black magic, the crocodile turned into a big real crocodile attacking the man and ripping him apart. No one knows if this story is real, but it is one of many. The second civilization practicing black magic was the Babel civilization. The difference between the two civilizations is that in the Pharaoh civilization, magic practice was limited to their priests only, a category of priests called Hob Garyu. However, in the Babel civilization, magic was spread by demons and satanic entities. In order to explain the spread of magic in Babel civilization, I have to tell you the story of Harut and Marut. So who are they? Some say they are kings, others say they are demons. Based on historical explanations, Herod and Merit are angels, not humans, and they are sent by God to teach people ways to protect themselves from demonic entities. One of the well-known magicians and kings in the Babel civilization is the king Nimrud, whose name was always linked to the famous Babel tour. He was said to have practiced magic to use demons and spirits for his evil purposes, 
However, he died tragically because of an insect who went in his head. Despite of the development witnessed in the world, people are still tempted with black magic practices. Some try to learn it and practice it, others make use of magicians in order to reach certain goals. The goals of magic differ based on the type of magic practiced. There is white magic, which is used for good purposes, black magic, which is used to harm or for evil goals. There is red magic, who is considered to be in between the white and black magic, who is used to solve problems. Many people still refuse the categorization of magic and say that there is only one type of magic and it is black magic. People who practice magic follow certain things in order to reach their goals. An example of that is the weird mysterious language they use in order to summon evil powers to help them with their magic. Another thing is the body movement they do and the hand movements also. In addition to that, they use candles, fumes and sometimes even personal things like hair, teeth, eyes and tongues. They could also use rocks and plants but the most dangerous thing they use is blood and sometimes human blood. Sometimes the practice is nothing more than telling spells in a language that is usually not understood. As you see in here, there are rules and bases for magic practices. Yes, there are even so many books written by big magicians to transmit their knowledge. However, these books are forbidden in many countries. Two of the ancient magic books are Talmud and Kabbalah. Talmud book being the most ancient. In this book, it is told to have found ways to create a living man after killing another, and also turn fruits and vegetables into animals, turn water into scorpios, and the most dangerous and mind-blowing is turning people into animals. The origin of the Kabbalah book goes back to the Hakam Shamun Ben Yuhai during the Roman Empire. Hakam meaning religious and educated men. The book of the Kabbalah was based on the ideas of this Hakam. Story says the Hakam ran away from the Roman Empire who wanted to execute him and hid in a cave where he did his meditation and visualization of the world and God. In the Kabbalah, we find magic practices and ways to summon dead spirits and satanic demons and how to use them and even reincarnate them. There are also black magic books in the modern times. The book of Chems al-Ma'rifa, meaning the son of knowledge. This book is forbidden in Muslim countries. It was written by Ahmad Ali al-Buni in the 12th century. The book talks primarily about ways to summon demons. The book disappeared for so long but it reappeared in 1985 and was printed in Beirut. The Book of Azif, written by the poet Abdallah Hadrat, who was known as the Crazy Arabic. According to Howard Lovecraft, Azif means the noise of insects at night, who were considered at some time to be the voices of demons and spirits. The book is considered as a history book. It speaks about ancient civilization and religions and how to get in contact with them. The writer says that the earth was at some point inhabited by creatures that are not human and are now trying to get in contact with humans using magic. He says that some of these creatures managed to get in contact with humans and are living amongst us in human bodies. It is now time for storytelling. I'm gonna tell you about two stories I've been told in relation to black magic. Story number one. In Cameroon, Africa, a friend of mine who's gonna be called Vanessa in this video used to live there in an old popular building. Shortly after she moved in, she heard rumors about one of the neighbors and his practices in black magic. People were saying that the man never sleeps and goes out at night to practice black magic on people. It was also told that the man was a part of this mysterious cult practicing magic. The craziest thing she heard was that the man had the ability to transform himself into an animal, a snake or a cat during the night using black magic in order to stay unnoticed and then transforms himself back to human when the sun rises. Of course, she thought it was all imagination, until one day at sunrise, she heard screams from outside the building and when she went out, she seen something that was out of this world. Her neighbor laying on the ground with half his body in the form of snake. 
People told her that the man missed the sunrise and never completed his transformation. The man was carried to the hospital, where he disappeared with no trace. The second story is about a man from Paris who's gonna be called Harry in this video. He began to grow interest in the black magic practices and wanted to try and summon a spirit in order to ask for wealth, money and power. Harry did his practices with no results. However, one night as he went out for a walk in public garden, a man approached him. Harry noticed that the man was not really human as he had black eyes and hairy palms. Harry understood that the creature was out of this world and that he was approached by a demon. The creature, or if we can call it the spirit or a demon, told Harry that they were summoned by him and in order to give him the wealth, power and money he desired, he must sign a form of contract with him. The contract says that Harry could no longer shower nor eat meat. Harry, being a maniac and loving of meat, refused the deal. So the demon walked away without a trace. Harry is still terrified of this experience. Thank you.